Welcome to the Echo Oscar Delta podcast, where we talk to Navy EOD techs and hear the stories that they want to share. All ideas, thoughts, and statements are those of the guest and the host of Echo Oscar Delta, and not of Navy EOD or Navy as a whole. So today I have Matthias Porter. He's a uh, lieutenant in EOD. Um, came in what in uh, well you came in in 2018. Yep, 2018, 2018 got okay. commissioned, um, cool. and then, yeah, went through the pipeline from there. Nice. And uh, so this episode is going to be a little bit different. We're not going to go heavy into, like, what you're actively doing, because, <laughs> uh, you know, for obvious reasons for those listening. But uh, I was actually pointed in, in your direction by um, another guy and uh, told you got you got some extracurricular activities that are pretty interesting, and uh, I would tend to agree. Um, Thank you. Before we really get into that, you know, let's uh, let's figure out a little bit about who is Matthias. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I did some uh, some internet stalking because that's what you do these days, right? And uh, found out you were you were into like so. There, there's a couple things physical wise that I think are like crazy. I I did distance running, and people think that that's crazy, but mm. really swimming i think is like you have to like hit yourself a little bit to like get heavy into swimming because that is a suffering sport yeah yeah and uh you know i was just i just i was just swimming the other week and yeah staring at a black line for for hours is geez i can't believe i did that but um the people i was doing with were enjoying it and they were like wow you're so good like yeah but wow now it is just not (laughs) <laughs> not nearly the same. Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad I had the skill. Um, and it, obviously it helped a lot, you know, at, at dive school and, and whatnot. But uh, and it was good. The sport was good while I was competing. I really enjoyed competing and racing people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now, but now, you know, going in the pool and swimming, just staring at that black line is, is rough. Yeah. Yeah. How would you get into swimming? Uh, so it was I was probably nine years old. My my mother and father were kind of wanted us to do a summer activity. Okay. And in back in Tennessee, it's where I grew up, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, they have summer league and from summer league swimming, um, it's about like two months long and you're kind of just, um, you, you, you go to practice every morning and then in the evenings, twice a week, there are swim meets. And so it was kind of just a good time for us to do something in the in the summer um, and actually like get some exposure to really swimming. Because yeah. before swimming, we I mean, sure, we could like swim from the diving board, jump in and then like get to the side, you know, so, yeah. like, our parents just kind of wanted us to get challenged a little bit there. And um we were kicking and screaming for the beginning of it. And then, you know, once, once the season ended, we all asked, Hey, can we do it again? Like, <laughs> you know, when are signups coming up? Um, and so I think from there, you know, nine years old to really first year of college, uh, was kind of like where I had my whole swimming career and really enjoyed it there. Yeah. Yeah. Did, uh, so you actually swam at the Academy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How was, uh, how was that? It was, it was really tough. It was, yeah. it was good. Um, had a really good group of friends doing it. Um, and, but it was completely different than swimming in high school. Yeah. And part of that was the time commitment, but also balancing the schoolwork. Like in high school, you can do your homework, the class before, yeah. you know, or you can like study for the test, the class, the class before your, your quiz or whatever. Um, but at the Academy, we had morning practices at it was probably like 6 a.m., 6 a.m. to 8 morning practice. And then Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, we would have lift at lunch for about an hour and a half. And then in the afternoon, we would have our like two hour, two and a half hour swim practice. So, yeah, balancing that with like 20 credits uh, in college was insane. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> and, it, and it that is kind of where I got one challenged a lot, but two, like kind of burnt out about it. Yeah. Just because like because you would also have swim meets on, over the weekend. So like you couldn't chill or anything. Um you were getting behind on homework or like studying and you know swim meets swim meets one would take the entire day and then you'd be traveling 
before and after. So you'd be traveling like to Pennsylvania. So that's like three hours, um, down and back. And then, um, and also like in high school, you only have maybe five swim meets in college. You have like 15 really? and they're all like little small dual meets. So it was actually kind of hard to stay competitive and like stay in that mindset. Cause you're like, all right, doing like this, these same races over and over again and trying to keep up the level intensity um, was a huge challenge, yeah. but, uh, but the biggest takeaway from there is like, I really enjoyed the guys I swam with still keeping talk in, in touch with them. Um, some of them are UD, nice. um, but, uh, yeah, it was definitely, it, what made me stay for that year was the guys. Yeah. Um, but then after that I had to, had to focus on schoolwork. Yeah. That was what's going to get my commission. We had a couple of people in my EOD school class that were in the academy and, and did swimming. And uh, one, like, I don't even need to know your times at all to know yeah. that if you were swimming in the academy, you're freaking fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, like, they said the exact same thing. You know, like, it, it is, that's crazy. It's a crazy schedule, like, to be able to try and keep, I'd. Yeah. Yeah. Hats off you do for doing it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, and I think especially as a, as a young kid, right. Freshman year, um, it can kind of get depressing. Like you're just struggling through these practices. Then you get to go to struggle through like calculus and chemistry. <laughs> yeah. And then you get to do it all over again, you know, for a whole year. But, um, that, yeah, again, that's when the, the dudes come in and yeah, you have a good time with them. Nice. So that kind of, that leads to actually why you're, you're here. Right. And why yeah. we're talking, which, you know, it's, it's crazy to think that, you know, it, it's extremely competitive to be on, um, swim team at, you know, a place like the Naval Academy, mm -hmm. but then you go on and do something even crazier, right. Where, um, you're doing pretty good at, uh, at the CrossFit games, like lead up, right. Like where. What, how'd you do there? <laughs> well, this year did really well. Yeah. Um, came or went into semifinals as I want to say 49th out of 60 in North America East. And then, uh, came out of semifinals with 26 out of 60. So that's legit. Uh, you know, went in, not really happy with how I had done at quarterfinals. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoy competing in person. Right, quarterfinals was an online competition. Right. And, um, th there's there's a lot of things that you know people can uh, people can be very comfortable at their own gym. You know, eating their own food, um, getting to plan the workout whenever they want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and and I really like the chaos that the the in person competition brings. Yeah, um, and puts everybody on the same you know level playing field. Um, and then it's just. Uh, yeah, three, two, one, go, and you just compete. So when you when you go to the in person ones, you know, I, I did, I did a little bit of CrossFit back in the day. Uh, nice. Did not qualify for anything ever, but you know, I did it. Um, so, but I watched the games, especially when they were like uh, first getting really popular. You mm -hmm. know, and um, have like watch watch a portion of the games every year, just because it's just, it's. It's cool to see people do stuff that's not normal. Like, yeah. like being at that level is not a normal thing, right? It takes right. Th just looking at that and, and realizing how much effort like goes into getting there, let alone competing at, at that level. Yeah. Um, how it are the, those meets set up for, for those who don't know? So, okay, we'll do, so semifinals was 60 male, 60 female. Uh, from the north, from North America east, so essentially Canada and then east of the Mississippi. Okay. And so that was a three-day competition, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It had seven tests, seven tests, and then in so some of the tests were heats of twenty. Um, some of the tests were, and then the rest were heats of heats of 10. Okay. Um, and you know, first heat being the, the worst and first heat being, you know, the, t or last heat being top dogs. Gotcha. Um, 
you they they have so at at the arena they have a warm up place which is a really nice crossfit gym right with like the rig all the machines you need the weights all you need and then there's a corral so like the heat about to get on the competition floor sits there for about 20 minutes um and then that way they can walk you out to the competition floor um and everybody you know takes their lane and and three two one go do the workout and then you come back um yeah i mean i think that's uh yeah so by um so seven uh um basically seven different workouts right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and when you go there do you have an idea of what those will be yeah for the most part uh this year they did a really good job about telling us um telling us the workouts ahead of time it was it was only two maybe a week and a half ahead of time okay so the, the week leading up you're just testing versions of that workout right like some some of the workouts you're not going to do full out full on because you'll be left sore for a week yeah. right <laughs> but uh but so what they will do that is kind of weird is sometimes they'll say like one of the events was eight snatches and then an 800 run okay and for the most part they use the the self-powered tre- treadmill mm-hmm. um but they li- they in some events they had that hey it's the assault runner that we're using and then some events is hey it's an 800 meter run oh, and really? so it kind of leaves you like guessing like huh are we going to be doing sh- an 800 shuttle run or are they going to have a course for us um ended up being a uh, an air runner which okay an 800 air runner race is really boring to watch yeah because just everybody on the same machine going um but um but at least everyone's kind of no, nah, I mean, it, it's still not a great, it wasn't a great test, but, uh, or way to run the test. But, yeah. But, uh, what was the question again? Uh, just, just, the the, um, did you know what oh, the workouts yeah. were going to be? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, there was, yeah, again, there are some of the nuances we didn't know, yeah. uh, but for the most part, you know, just like two weeks, a week and a half before the competition, um, they would yeah come out with the workouts and we take a look at them yeah so backing up if you only know you know generally what the workout's going to be two weeks ahead of time you know you have what 50 other weeks that you well i guess 49 because the week of the competition um 49 other weeks where you're kind of guessing what they're going to do for next year right so how do you work those in like work the workouts for the rest of the year yeah so that's when um that's when my coach is coming in, into the play right um so i use training think tank and they do a really good job of picking up on the biases that the competition directors have okay um and kind of getting a little nerdy with the stats like st- stats on like hey you know, thrusters show up 25% of the time in during this competition. So we'll put in this amount of thruster. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll put in this amount of thruster, you know, kind of work. And then other movements like, hey, swimming, they've never swam at semifinals, so we're not going to swim. You yeah. Know? Um, but a lot of it is like you do CrossFit and you will get better at CrossFit. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the thing with CrossFit is like, hey, you can do wall balls, rowing and deadlifts and of, and that type of conditioning will get you better also at ring muscle ups, pull ups and running, for example. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Backing up a little bit. When did you. So. So you got obviously pretty good at it to, to make it mm-hmm. to, to semifinals and do really well there. Um, where did that, that start? Have you done CrossFit for a long time? Have you mm-hmm. been heavy into a different type of working out? You know, you, you talk a little bit about, uh, doing the, the hour workouts, um, just, just strength and conditioning mm-hmm. for, for swimming. Mm-hmm. But where did the, the CrossFit kind of start for you? So dir- directly after swimming. So um, took some time off the swim team and immediately went to the CrossFit affiliate there at the academy. Okay. Um, CrossFit Blue and Gold. And after classes, they will run um, 
after school classes, they will run two classes open to the faculty and students, and it'll be uh, your typical um, CrossFit class run by the team members of CrossFit Blue and Gold. Okay. And so I went went to those went to those classes, um, and kind of like you, I was had seen videos and documentaries and the CrossFit games before. And so I thought that was kind of interesting um, and wanted to, you know, see, see what it was like. And I still had like that competitive, that drive to be competitive and race people or, yeah. and also just prove to myself that I can be the best version of myself in some physical aspect. Right. Um, and so CrossFit was that after going to the classes for a little bit, uh, they asked me to, hey, would you like to be on the CrossFit team? Um, and that was awesome. I was like, yeah, of course, I'm going to be on the CrossFit yeah. team. And so I get to work out, you know, and and, and not stare at a, at a black line all day. <laughs> um, so, yeah, joined the CrossFit team, um, got my level one. So I ended up coaching classes as well nice. at the affiliate. That was really cool. Um, helping out, you know, fellow midshipmen um, reach their physical goals and then also like teachers and and the staff um and then from there like we would do competitions with like against army or just local competitions at other affiliates and uh really enjoyed that so that kind of like scratched my competitive itch but i kept wanting to get better and better and better um back then they had regionals and so that was the goal is to make regionals and then now they have semifinals so it was the goal to hey let's make semifinals and then go from there that's pretty cool um when so when you got on the team when did you start um well actually i guess you got on the team you started doing well well you started doing well and then you got on the team usually that's how it works right mm -hmm. now yeah. <laughs> and then uh and then how did that uh time wise i guess so comparing getting good at um the CrossFit side of things versus, uh, and, and being able to compete versus the, the time that it took for the swimming and being able to compete at, at those levels. Mm, I love it, How did those compare? Yeah. Um, so, okay. So for swimming, I ended up, uh, eventually went, so from summer league, I eventually went to, uh, year round swimming. Okay. And that following year, I qualified for what was called Southeasterns, which was essentially SECs for age group, right? For okay. age group swimmers. Yeah. Um, eventually made it there and started competing. And, and that was kind of like at this, me at this big competition, competing against people that are all, from all over the Southeast. That was kind of a big thing for me, right? Um, CrossFit first year was just local competitions. So you could, Anybody could qualify. You just had to pay to get in, right? Gotcha. Um, but then it took. I mean, I didn't. I didn't make semifinals until 2021, so it definitely took a lot longer, right? So I guess that would be 2016 to 20, yeah, 2021. Okay. Um, so much longer than swimming. Um, but I think I'm a better CrossFitter than I was a swimmer, which really? is really weird to say. <laughs> Uh, cause you know, you're a D you become a D one athlete, right? Any sport. And you think you're the top of the sport, um, the top of your human potential. Uh, but being able to excel in CrossFit after having swam or any, or for anybody after having excelled at a, a D one sport, um, is pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things, so when I, when I ran a lot, they actually, um, I studied, a little bit about you know like physiology and, and like how things work and mm. you know, trying to get better and trying to understand you know potential and mm. stuff um and one of the things that was pretty interesting is a lot of the top runners were actually swimmers first and oh. they they looked at that and um what they kind of saw was that swimmers tend to use oxygen way mm. better because you don't get it whenever you want. Mm, <laughs> you have yeah, to like yeah. plan yeah. To, to take it. Um, have you noticed that your, your kind of a, ability to uh, work in that anaerobic space may be a little bit longer because you utilize 
oxygen a little better potentially because of your swimming background? Have you thought about that at all? Uh, anaerobic as in like during lifts or? Yeah, well, like I, I guess it's really not anaerobic because anaerobic is a very small piece. But yeah. um, like your ability to not get into that like your ability to use oxygen mm. um so last uh, essentially last longer at a higher level um sure yeah yeah I, I, yes probably and um you know maybe my coaches would have a better idea of like you know what that actually means i will say though that being able so in swimming you can only breathe you know, a certain amount of times. Right. Right. Uh, but in CrossFit, you can breathe all the time. Yeah. And I, I think that was actually kind of a learning point was, really? wow, I've never had to br- have to breathe this hard. Cause usually I'm like kind of gearing myself down, like, whoa, 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 you know, and swimming, yeah. Hey, you can't yeah. be breathing this much cause you can only, you know, breathe every three or, or whatever, or, or, Hey, you have to hold, hold this long underwater. Um, so, calm down a little bit yeah so yeah i actually think that uh they're they they were very different experiences uh, okay and that yeah in crossfit you know being out of the water you can like kind of breathe too much yeah <laughs> or at least more than i was comfortable with yeah yeah that's interesting i actually didn't even think about that that's yeah if you've if you spent you know most of your life doing yeah. a sport where you're you're actually holding, essentially holding back so mm-hmm, that you can mm-hmm. continue for, for longer periods. Being able to breathe whenever you want is, yeah. is actually, you're, did you find yourself kind of either, maybe not holding your breath, but, but holding yourself back when you actually could go further initially? Uh, actually, definitely holding my breath. Really? So, yeah. So there's some times that I'm like, say climbing a, climbing a rope yeah. and, I'm, and I'm like holding my breath as I'm you know pulling and it's like whoa, whoa, whoa wait you're just making this harder you know once I get off the rope I'm gonna be gasping for air yeah um, so actually a lot of like cues that I give myself is hey breathe through the movement like figure out a breathing pattern yeah um, I've looked into running as well like breathing every fourth or every third um, step yeah and so um yeah for me it's been figuring out like when to breathe um and finding that throughout the each movement right interesting um, that's pretty yeah. cool yeah I don't know. yeah w- when i ran it was uh oh, i can't remember it's been so long since i've ran like that now i just try and breathe whenever i can because i'm so out of shape but um <laughs> <laughs> um i would do i would do this weird like double breath out and then a single longer breath in for running. Yeah. Like huh. it's like, uh, I would, I'd basically like breathe out on two steps and breathe like with a, a, a kind of a forceful, like, like audible breath, breath, and then longer breathe in. Huh. And I would try and do that for a while. And then, and then I would get to a point, you know, depending on, on the, the length of race, whatever, where I'd have to like take a couple, like, more forceful breaths yeah, yeah, in yeah. to mm-hmm. try and recover and, and get set up again. And then, but it, it, that was more like a, that was more like a pacing cue. Mm, yeah. And that's actually something that I wanted to, to ask you about. So pacing and swimming, mm-hmm. you, you probably got really good at, you know, knowing that if I'm moving this amount of energy and yep. I have this stroke, I know, I pretty much know what time I'm going to get for, yeah. for an event. Right. Yeah. Um, pacing for CrossFit during mm. a workout. I'm sure you have to, it, it's some form or another pace yourself, but how was translating how you used to pace versus pacing during a workout? I, I think the pacing piece was pretty good. And I think like as a competitor, I think I'm very good at pacing myself and understanding like my limits there. That is probably because of swimming yeah. and having so many pacing um, workouts. But then when you go to CrossFit, you kind of have to learn, right? You, you have to learn your your limits. So, mm-hmm. whoa, that was too fast, you know, with thrusters or squats. Hey, that was too many squats right there. Um, and then you also have to find, you know, your slow point. So I, I think once I figure it out, um, you know, as a beginner, once I figured out my left and right limits, um, 
sticking to a good pace plan was kind of easy. I yeah. mean, every once in a while, you know, you in that that's just what CrossFit is. Like every once in a while, you get shaken and you, you know, got to figure it out. But, um, yeah. Do you ever have any when you were first learning that, or even after? Um, do you ever have any times where like you just crushed a workout, but like you crushed it a little too hard and we're just smoked and, and like couldn't really reset very well for the next thing. Yeah, totally. Uh, sometimes that's good. I think in training, sometimes it's good to, you yeah. know, go too hard and kind of figure out what, where you are. Um, but I know like, it, like in competitions like this, uh, during semifinals, um, this is kind of a weird, uh, pacing, but it, it kind of has to do with like, getting excited or you know pushing too much but i remember on my it was event four and five it was a 800 run sorry 800 run and then a max snatch okay and then you would rest two minutes and do eight snatches at 185 as a much lighter weight and then an 800 run so it's kind of 800 sandwich with some snatches in the middle um the first 800 didn't really matter, right? It was just, hey, run like an easy 320-ish. Okay. Just just so that you're fresh enough to hit at least three attempts. You only, it, it was it was a six-minute window. So 320-ish, and then you had like three, maybe four attempts at a rep max. Um, ran at a 320. was cool, easy. Hit like two good attempts, and then I hit uh, 280 at, a, at my third attempt. Okay. Was super pumped, really super excited, fired up. But then two minutes later, there's another workout, which, by the way, you have to go. Because yeah. it's just eight snatches and then an 800 sprint. <laughs> and uh, me being not so much a good runner, uh, you know, ha- being in that excited state, being pumped up about, you know, a one snatch and then having to back it up with, hey, eight lighter f- snatches and then an 800 sprint. Um that that was kind of a point where I was like, wow, yeah, I got to like, you know, kind of calm down because yeah. it ended up hurting a lot. You know, yeah. I, I think, shoot, I so the first three, the first one was like 320 and then my last one was maybe like 315, three, like it was pretty much exactly the same. Yeah. But I was just smoked. Right. So and everyone else was like, you know, running like sub threes or low threes. And I'm like, geez, dude. <laughs> um, but uh yeah, no, that that's kind of a part where you, I guess, in the competition floor, can take the best out of you. Um, yeah. Because you get super pumped up, or, um, or even you just take a workout too out too fast, um, and then it pays. You know, at at the end, right? You gotta get yeah. Doing, uh, <clears throat> um, oh man, what was I gonna ask? Uh, oh, so you said not not a great runner is that because you don't like running or uh, mm, maybe i i guess i don't really like running yeah, now most, uh, most people don't honestly <laughs> although i do like running on a track okay you know, with like actual intervals over yep. just hey i'm gonna go for a 30 minute run yeah um and part of that is probably just because like having something to do during mm-hmm. the run right like watch your clock at like every 200 or whatever yeah um and keeps me focused but uh, no, I, and actually running is one of those things that I've had to work on a lot. Really? Um, yeah, no, I mean, people, people at EOD school and dive school know, yeah, I am not a good runner. <laughs> I can sprint. I'll, I'll sprint. Right. Yeah. Uh, but no running, I'm in the back or I was in the back. Now I like to say I'm, I'm getting a little better. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I think part of it also was, uh, as a swimmer, you know, you said swimmers had translated well to running. Um, I don't know. I don't know about them, but uh, that was not the case for me. Really? No. Uh, and I think a lot of it was like just calves and leg tolerance. Mm. Um, right. In swimming, it's zero gravity. Yeah. Um, and your calves aren't necessarily being pounded or anything like that. So um, I think for me, shin splints and just building yeah. up some tolerance was was a big thing for me. Yeah. On that, did you have uh, when when you started? Well, actually in swimming, so I think 
if I remember right, a lot of the, the injuries on swimming is like shoulder type stuff, mm, right? Mm -hmm. Did you have any problems in that or did you stay relatively unscathed? No, yeah, I didn't have any issues. Nice. Um, and maybe that's because I think people with shoulder issues come from like freestyle, backstroke, maybe butterfly. I was a breaststroker. Okay. So a lot of times when they were doing the other strokes, I was doing breaststroke and I guess it just... It, it, it wouldn't put me in a position to hurt my shoulder as much. Gotcha. Um, honestly, if anything, I'm, uh, my shoulder is a little more tweaked in during CrossFit. Really? Mostly because it's just like muscle tightness. Yeah. Um, but swimming has helped with having like really mobile shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. So like in an overhead squat, I can put my shoulder or, or my grip. I can bring my grip in a lot more, like pretty much shoulder width apart. Really? Um, which helps keep it more stable yeah uh, especially when you're fatigued rather than having your arms out really far out um like a normal person would i guess yeah yeah, yeah like like me I yeah. have that <laughs> as far as possible <laughs> yeah. um funny story so when i i did triathlons uh a little bit before i came in um and that it's a weird weird tangent sorry um I, I had a motorcycle or I had a, I had a car. Um, I blew second gear in the car. I couldn't afford to fix it for a while. I was at, at the track doing oh, yeah. track <laughs> racing. Um, and so I bought a road bike and I would ride 10 miles to work, 10 miles nice. home every day. So then I was like, well, I run all the time and I bike. I should, I should do a triathlon. You got to add one more. Dude, I could swim and I was comfortable in the water, yeah. but I didn't actually know strokes. Um, I did, it was a, it was a mini try, right? So I, I can't remember how far it was, but it was probably like, you know, a half mile swim, 600 meter mm -hmm. swim, something like mm -hmm. that. My head was out of the water the entire time. I remember oh, thinking geez. like the first one I did, I remember thinking like, there's a safety kayaker. I could just be done right now, mm -hmm. you know, but I didn't, I went back dude, for the next three days my head felt like it was 400 pounds from just yeah, holding it up out of the wall. Oh, dude, terrible. Yeah. Um, but when I came in the Navy, you know, what for our test is what, uh, um, breaststroke or side stroke, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, yep. And, yeah. yep. And I didn't know the names of the strokes. So I had, I had done breaststroke a bunch mm -hmm. thinking that it was called something else. And then, um, did freestyle, thinking that that was side stroke. What? I wasn't smart <laughs> enough to like, you know, do a simple Google search yeah, on yeah, like, yeah. what are these strokes? Yeah. I just, I never asked anybody. I just went and did it. Right. And then I show up and, uh, do, do the test for the first time. And like, I'm looking around and did, I had done for, for all my distance stuff, I had done freestyle thinking that that was going to be the stroke. And, I did not know actual side stroke. So yeah. for, for the first, like, I don't know, it, it took a while to like learn side stroke, which, mm -hmm. is, which for me was actually ended up being a little bit, I, I could, I could go longer mm -hmm. in, yeah, in side stroke. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. Style would. Yeah, yeah. But dude, breaststroke, like all day long. And it That's was, awesome. it wasn't because I, I meant to, it's totally because I was just, I, was, I wasn't smart <laughs> enough to like Google it, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, I actually, I actually really enjoyed breaststroke. That, yeah. was, a, that was a fun stroke. Um, sorry. Yeah. Weird, weird tangent. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, with, with, uh, running wise, mm. do you do specific like running workouts to get better occasionally? Or do you just add more running into a workout that has lifting mm, yeah, and stuff yeah. to try and both. Okay. Right now, especially in the off season, I'll do pure running and mostly longer running. Yeah. Um, you know, longer like zone two, 30 minute runs, stuff like that. Um, yeah. 30 minute runs is a lot for me. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, and, and throughout the year I'll keep those like pure runs. Cause that also is, can be one of the tests at a competition can be just a, a run. Yeah. Um, but then also as the, at the, as the season progresses, we'll like start adding running in the workouts. So, you know, running kettlebells and pull-ups or something like that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely, I think there are two different types of running too. Um, cause you know, when you're 
just running, you don't have kettlebells and like squats that like, you know, blow up your low back mm -hmm. or blow up your legs and, and being able to figure out how to, how to still run efficiently when, you know, when a certain body part is tired, yeah. um, is kind of, is kind of a different challenge. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. I know when, uh, I, I have always hated doing anything in addition to running because mm. I, for so long, you know, oh, that's, that's all I did. Literally all I did was run. Like mm -hmm. I couldn't pick anything. If you asked me to pick up a feather, you know, yeah. I'd have to like huh. recover for a week, but, uh, um, because that's, that's literally all I did. But then, you know, when we did the, the CrossFit stuff, you do things like, like, was it Murph that has the, yeah. the mile and then, um, the, was it pull up? Hundred, um, hundred pull ups, two hundred push ups, and then three hundred squats, yeah. and then another mile run. Yeah, yeah. And dude, I, I swear, I would always like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change the way I ran because I didn't even think mm, about it, mm. right? So I'd always be jacked up afterwards. Yeah, because yeah, it, it totally makes sense. You need to, as you, as other parts get tired, you have to, you have to. I'm assuming compensate, but not so much that you're you're yep. putting it in a a. Um, position where you might actually injure it right yeah, yeah yeah um especially so that you know when we talk about murph that last mile you come off the squats and your legs are just done right yeah. um i found that having a higher tempo high, higher cadence with my run helps me clear out my legs oh really much faster nice. um so like if i did if i went did the 300 air squats and then went directly into my typical running uh, cadence, it, I, I would just be sucking for the entire mile. Yeah. Um, but I think playing around with a higher cadence, you, you fe it feels weird, right? The, f like you're almost just like speed walking. Yeah. Um, but after a while, I think it, it clear cleared my legs out a lot more, uh, and a lot faster. So I don't know. That's something you could play with, I guess. But, uh, yeah, st little stuff like that. Um, and then also just like, you know, making sure that you aren't, running too fast into another movement you know so gotcha yeah conserving a little bit yourself yeah yeah that makes sense um what is your favorite workout do you have one i think one of my favorite workouts is amanda amanda's a good one um which is nine seven five of squat snatches at 135 and then ring muscle ups okay so amanda's weird in that it's not really a ball to the wall because you still have to squat snatch and that's there's some coordination required with yeah. that um and then the ring muscle ups as well you can't just for the most part you can't just go all nine unbroken or all seven unbroken um Cause then you'll just blow up and then you won't have anything left left in the tank. Yeah. So I, I, I like workouts where it's, um, it's not so much, you know, simple zero to a hundred. It's more so like kind of calculated and figuring out like how fast can I actually go? Yeah. Um, without, you know, without dying and without not even being able to do another rep, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, Amanda's, I think one of my favorite ones, um, least favorite ones would be, Something with like burpees in it. Yeah, dude, I hate burpees. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. The, the people who like burpees, they, they got something wrong with them. <laughs> yeah. It, it, no. Like, just no. Um, yeah, definitely burpees. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. It, it, it is funny how I think, I think most people really dislike burpees. Yeah. Like, there's. I don't. Uh, <laughs> No, I don't, I don't. I'm trying to think of someone I, that I know that likes burpees, but I don't think I know. Anybody. Yeah, no. that's probably why it's such a good thing to do as a punishment when you're when yeah. you're going through school. Yeah, yeah, and they're you screw up on something. Yeah. All right, hundred burpees for the class or yeah. whatever. You know, yeah. and you're like, yeah. oh, and then everybody hates you if you're the one that's caused the burpees. And mm -hmm. yeah, burpee broad jumps, <laughs> yeah. you do all kinds of burpees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um. So as you went through, uh, EOD school, how were you, were, did you have a goal in, in CrossFit when you were going through EOD school as like you wanted to get to a certain level, um, or, or were you just kind of like doing it mm. having a good time doing it? 
Like, what, what was your motivation then? Or? I think I had a, you know, a hundred yard or mile out target for semifinals or that level. Okay. Um, but for the most part, UD school was just, hey, d- do well in, in, in school. Um, and then you get to work out for an hour and a half, two hours after. Yeah. Um, and just and just kind of like keep up your fitness, improve in some areas. And then like, you know, later on, there's going to be plenty of time to be able to do two sessions a day. Yeah. Um, cause, yeah. You're, you're not going to do that yeah. in UD school. Um, w- or maybe you can, but then you won't finish UD school. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. That's true. Um, no. And, and like at a UD school, you're. Um, you know, you'll have PT, you'll get punished for something. So that kind of is your workout anyway. Right. Yeah. Like, um, and that's kind of how, how I focus things like, look, UD school, it, it would be way worse to finish, to, to not finish UD school, you know, and, and be able to say that I competed in some sort of competition in CrossFit, but, um, it was definitely, uh, made it a good point to, you know, focus on UD school and yeah, you can still CrossFit, but yeah hey that this is the priority then you get to you get to your mobile unit um were you able to start like ramping up a little bit yeah so i got to my mobile unit during covid um so oh, nice. a little bit I essentially time. didn't go to the, you know like <laughs> um you know yeah for for a long time we were you know in and out of the in and out of the office um so yeah that gave me more time to to work out and i had all the equipment with me so I, like i didn't really worry about you know having to go to a gym or anything like that i remember doing workouts in my apartment um in my apartment complex around the the parking lot yeah um but uh yeah and then you know i'll work out like now i'll work out at 5 a.m with my wife go to work and then have like you know, a cardio piece in the evening, um, after work. So being able to like plan out and balance the whole day, um, has been really good, especially being at the mobile unit. Yeah. Yeah. When you go on, uh, vacations, Mm. how does that help or hurt you? (laughs) It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. And I think at the beginning, I, and this is also like back when I was a swimmer too, like I would freak out if I was going on vacation, like, Oh, I got to find a pool. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be out of shape and fat when I come home, you know? Um, and especially during the, during the swim season. Um, but like, as I get older one, I'm like, this is a good time to rest one. You're not going to lose everything. It's, you know, go for a week long vacation. Look, you're not going to lose everything. Um, but I, I'd be lying if I said I don't work out during vacation. Like yeah. I still go like, Hey, go see a CrossFit affiliate. Um, you know, drop, drop into one of their classes, uh, you know, do a run. If I go to the beach, do a beach run with my wife and my dog or, uh, stuff like that. But I used to worry too much about it. Yeah. Um, and then kind of learn that, Hey, you know, taking some time off a vacation is, is good, is good for you. Yeah. It helps, you know, when the season gets longer and it's a little more mental, you have that, that week that you took that kind of like helps you reset and get ready for that. Uh, when the season actually matters. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes sense. I, when I was competitive running, I was just like you were when you were swimming, like I, I hated holidays. I hated vacations. Cause it like, I'm, I'm very much a like routine person mm-hmm. and anything that breaks that routine, it takes me a bit to reset and like not knowing where I'm going mm-hmm. you know, to, I knew, I knew exactly how far I was going to run in the morning, what mm-hmm. the workout was going to be. If I was going to run the afternoon, I knew on Sundays where and when and who I was going to run with, you know, like yeah. all of that was just yeah. planned out for me. And anytime I, uh, went on a vacation, I didn't know that. Oh man, it was just like yeah, and then you don't have fun on the vacation. Yeah, exactly. Or as fun as you could have had, yeah. you know. There, are, um, there are definitely some ex girlfriends that were not happy about. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to bring them on the run. They yeah. didn't want to come with you on the run. They, they didn't want to come, and then and then uh, just it, it, even if I did something, yeah, I, just my mind was yeah. not just like I said. I wasn't having fun on the vacation doing mm-hmm. the vacation thing. I was thinking about what I was missing or what I wasn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. 
yeah, I would either, you know, go to an affiliate or just do a, a smaller workout. Yeah. You know, just, just just so that I can at the end of the day be like, Okay, cool, I, I did a workout, but I had most of the time to do vacation stuff, you know. Nice. Yeah. Uh something popped up on my Facebook from uh eight years ago. I drove from here out to Montana and my wife and I both were like, you know, no kids, no responsibilities. Um, and we were both into like working out pretty decent back then. And, uh, I've got a picture. I remember <laughs> the picture is just a barbell with, I think it was 45 pounds on, on the side. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, a couple dumbbells that we had thrown in the back of the truck on our drive from here to Montana and then back. And we were in, I think it was Yellowstone, um, national park yeah. in a campground. And the picture is like in the campground there. And I totally remember there was like, you know, people all around and we're up at like seven thirty, just getting after it. Right. And yeah. I remember like the other campers looking like what's wrong with these people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we get those looks in our neighborhood. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Some people will find it really weird. It, it, it kind of is it's like, what yeah. the heck you're out of that, you know, you can't just go hiking or right. just do normal <laughs> stuff. But, uh, no, it's just, yeah, different values, different, yeah. um, it's cool though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, going on deployment, how did that affect things? Like, were you able to keep up, uh, a similar tempo? Were you able to adjust, um, when you went on deployment? Yeah, totally. Nice. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I obviously had to adjust. So in Camp Lemonier, Djibouti, um, one, it's probably one of the hottest places in the world. Yeah. Uh, so there was some heat acclimation I had to do. Um, but at, at some point, you just kind of like accept it and you, you know, figure out a plan on, you know, what, how you're going to make it work. Um, yeah. So on deployment, I would work out in the mornings. Um, and then, you know, we would work until until about like 1600 then i would do my other my next workout um i kind of waited for i mean there's some times where you can't avoid the 115 degree weather yeah um so you just kind of have to bite bite the bullet there and hope that you have that you can walk over to the ac (laughs) um there are some times that i I walked in like just hyperventilating and (laughs) freaking out um and the guys are like, are you all right? Like, they're just watching the show like, you all right, dude? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. This, I'll, I'll be back to normal in like two minutes. Yeah. Don't worry. Just let me have this AC. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, got some good training. And then also, like, it was fun um, doing it with the guys, too. Yeah. Because um, I guess during the workup, we kind of, you know, did our own thing. We'd go home and work out. But then, like, in Djibouti, we were forced to be together and... Um, I brought my echo bike. So that was a lot of fun. Had nice. The guys, uh, did a couple workouts on that. Um, yeah, no, it, it was fun. Um, I think, yeah, the worst part was battling the, uh, the smoke, um, uh-huh. in the morning, I get for, for some reason in the morning they would turn on, it was probably like at 2 AM. They would turn on the incinerator that was upwind of the base and so you would wake up at like 5 a.m. to like the smell of burning plastic in your oh, clue. Dear. It was gross. Um, so bad. Um, and then you'd walk outside and yeah, it was just haze everywhere. Um, That's terrible. And it would just, it would stink up your clothes for the rest of the day. Um, you'd taste it. Uh, so when it was really bad, I'd be like, all right, I'm not going to work out this morning. Yeah. Th- this would just be ridiculous. Um, I'm going to have a, a tumor in like <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> right. Um, but other than that, it was that and the heat. Um, there were big challenges, I guess, but you kind of just face them and go. Yeah. So the your your goal now, right? You made you made semifinals. Mm-hmm. You did really well there. Mm-hmm. Um, and it sounded like that was like the the goal that you had, mm-hmm. and you've been able to to hit that. What's what's your next? goal yeah I, so i guess the big the next big goal would be to make the crossfit games um you know so last year i had made semifinals and was like top uh top second third right i was like out of 30 i was 20 or 19th and so 
the plan with this year was, hey, let's place better and just keep climbing up the leaderboard. So 26 out of 60. And then next year is, hey, let's be in that, be in the talk for it, right? Like, let's mm-hmm. be, you know, battling with the dudes um, that are at that cut line. Uh, so this year they had, it was top, maybe top 12 or top 11 of the guys. Um, and so, you know, if, if that's the same thing next year, then it's to, you know, be battling in that top 11 area. Okay. Yeah. Working with uh, your coaches. Yeah. Um, do you have, like, did you come back from semifinals and basically, like, maybe take a quick break and then kind of sit down with your coaches? How do we how do we get there? How do we do that? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, and, you know, that's uh, taking a break after such a long season is something that I've learned over the years to do. Um, you know, as a young kid, you always want to you, – you get done with your big – season ending game and then you're like all right i want to get back to it yeah um but you know that can kind of drain you mentally and so this season i took a whole week off um which for me i've I've never done a whole week of where i literally don't do anything yeah like when uh when my wife would wake up at 5 a.m i would either sleep in or i would just like walk downstairs and like sip coffee while she was like working out like it was really hard yeah um yeah yeah, (laughs) because You know, you, you feel like you want to do, you need to do something. Um, but no, taking that week off was really nice. Um, and then this past month, I've just been doing like an hour of working out in the morning, mostly just like weights, um, like bodybuilding movements, um, kind of just building some muscle and not necessarily yeah. getting crazy in shape and or pushing the intensity, but. Um, and then in the e- evening, maybe I'll do like a long run or long bike, nothing crazy, uh, just kind of building a base for the rest of the season. Um, and then I have sat down with my coach and talked about, hey, still need to get good at running because <laughs> uh, I was like one of the last people off the treadmill. <laughs> and that's humbling. Um, so, yeah, running and then some like deadlift stuff and other uh, pieces to work on. So, um, yeah, excited about the plan that we have going um and definitely you know i still actually haven't got gotten to the point where i'm still doing all out crossfit yeah uh so you know still getting to that hungry point of wanting to get back after it and bring the intensity nice yeah um the recovery aspect for it so when you're when you're going through um what do you do for for like you know, I know, I know CrossFit has a mobility program kind of built yeah, into yeah. it. Right. And then the, the structure. Um, but when you start getting like nagging injuries yeah. or, um, or things that aren't quite feeling right, you know, I'm, I'm sure those things kind of come up here and there. Right. Yeah. How do you, how do you address those as you're going through and <laughs> setting up your plan? I hit up, uh, Isabella. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, strike's been amazing and it's, and I use it especially for that. Um, going to her telling her like the other week I was telling her like my shoulder feels dislocated I cannot move it like it does not you know move the same way as my other shoulder yeah and uh she was like well you wouldn't be able you wouldn't be here if it was dislocated (laughs) you'd be crying or whatever but uh um and so she you know stick a couple needles in and oh wow there goes the pain so and then she was like you know make sure to stay on your soft tissue and um stretching i'm pretty good about stretching uh but soft tissue is kind of um that harder thing to do and so yeah staying on like foam rolling because last year was my knee and it was because of foam rolling just it being so tight you know and once she acupunctured me a little bit and then just had me you know do these rolling uh movements it helped a lot so uh rolling a lot and make sure to stay on top of that and then um stretching as well yeah um and then I also hit up those uh, Norma Tech boots at Strike too. Those Dude, those are, nice. are legit. Those yeah. are really nice. I I wanted yeah. to buy some, and then I saw the price, and I was like, uh, yeah. yeah, I'll just go to Strike. <laughs> yeah. On deployment, um, we had a guy shout out Cody who had the hips and the the boots. So really? that was aw- yeah, it was awesome. Nice. You know, had our gym, and then we had like the recovery station. So that's that awesome. Sick. Yeah. Dude, that's cool. legit. Yeah, that's, it was awesome. I I did. I have I have spent a lot of money on uh you know just various rehab Same. items yep. um you know whether it's like do one of the best things that i that i 
spent money on was you know they they always have the the lacrosse ball right yeah but yeah. there's there's a a ball that i got and i can't remember the 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 brand of it but it has heat and vibration Ooh. and do you bryce maybe Hypervolt, hyper high. It might, it might have been, yeah, it might have been that. Um, But man, there were times where, like, you know, there'd be a spot in my Mm -hmm. back, and I'm like, dude, I, I can't, I can't roll it Mm. because it's just, it's too tight. Yeah, I don't want to put just a a straight up lacrosse ball on it. And then when I got that thing, dude, I I would, I turn on the heat Mm. and I turn on the vibration, right? And I just, I put it in my back off to the side of where it hurt and then I'd Ooh, slowly yeah. move yep. towards it and eventually just that the vibration and the heat would like loosen it enough where then I could yeah. like actually put it right under the spot and ah oh, dude you could feel it just melt over nice. it. yeah that thing yeah. was that was probably the the best and it really wasn't that expensive you know but yeah yeah I mean and I I mean I've spent money on like a compax so it was like that electrical stim oh yeah um, those are kind of just annoying to <laughs> Yeah. Put on. I don't know if you've ever put one of those on, but like, you know, putting the little stickies everywhere, yeah. everywhere and then like after a couple times the stickies get old, so you have mm-hmm. to buy those uh buy new ones. Um that I have a hypervolt, so like little massage yep. gun. Those are sweet. Love those. And then I also do the uh the scraping. Yes. Those yeah. Those are pretty good too. Um and then cupping. Cupping is yeah. awesome as well. Yeah. Yeah. It- I got for for a while. I was down in in Florida, and uh, dude, my like, I've got tiny calves, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, for being a runner, I, like they should be way bigger than they <laughs> are, but they are not, dude. They're so yeah. tiny, and I got made fun of all the time, and like, it doesn't even bother me anymore. You know how you like, if you have something that like is just a weakness, and everybody's like getting after it, it either like. You either like go down or you're just like, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to embrace it. So yeah, now yeah, I've just, yeah. I've just learned to embrace it, yeah. but it, it, it's always caused like shin problems mm. with me, you know, kind of like just everything's weak down there. Um, but dude, I, for, for like probably like a month, I would have to scrape and it would loosen everything up Yeah. and then I would go out and I would do my run and like, I'd be good. But if I didn't, man, oh, dude, my ankles, like any flex in the ankles mm-hmm. and like everything's hurting and yeah, it's that thing was was awesome scraping and then uh i i did get cup cups but my problem is like the place where i need the cupping the most is my mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. and uh i probably complained to my wife too much so uh, now she doesn't want to yeah. do it you know yeah. and i'm of course you know I'm, I'm being the awesome husband so i'm like hey can you do this and not you're, you're not doing it right it needs yeah. to go over here and yeah, yeah. eventually she's yeah. like all right you're i'm out yeah <laughs> but yeah, yeah that, that stuff is, is is awesome to be able to have and and uh and use and kind of man it, it it makes me think like what were people doing you know 50 years ago yeah like, <laughs> yeah or even like 10 years ago when people didn't know about this that's stuff. true yeah you know? like yeah yeah it definitely helps a lot um and it's crazy how quick it can help mm-hmm. you know yeah. yeah so yeah man um Dude, I appreciate you coming on and talking about it. You know, I, I, one of the things I wanted to do, you know, been doing the, the series on like retired and separated guys, yeah. but like it's it's cool to, uh, uh, I think I, something that I want to do is kind of like like find those dudes that are doing something something that honestly is a little crazy, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> trying to go after something like that. Like it, it's a good kind of crazy though. You mm-hmm. know, like we got we got dudes that come into the the community. And, you know, the job in itself is, is a little crazy. Like, why mm-hmm. would anybody want to do this? You mm-hmm. know, I still don't know why I wanted to do this, but, you know, and then over and above on top of that, like, it's, it's pretty cool, man. Uh, seeing, you know, it was cool that somebody pointed you out. Right. And yeah, then, yeah. and then I started, you know, uh, looking at it a little bit and then reaching out to you and um like dude yeah this is this is freaking awesome i'm definitely excited that you were you were willing to come on and like be yeah, highlighted for, sure. for this so yeah appreciate it this is cool um yeah i can't wait to see how many other people uh you interview and all the different stories you know that yeah this community has yeah yeah it, i'm i'm excited too i'm excited to see what what else is out there and uh you know as you uh you make it to the games, you know, Heck I have yeah. to come back on Heck and yeah. tell how that was. And, sure. uh, yeah, dude, again, appreciate it. Thanks dude. All right. Awesome.
Thank you for listening to the Echo Oscar Delta podcast, where we talk to Navy EOD techs and hear the stories that they want to share.